iPhone 15. Apple claims that the paint is infused within the back glass this year, which is pretty cool. But I don't know if that's actually true. And are we going to be able to make this beautiful thing again? Let's find out. So the 15 Pro Max's back glass is not infused. We tested that out and it turns out you can scratch the paint off. But this phone looks pretty different from the 15 Pro Max's back glass. Let's take a closer look. My theory is that they infuse the paint on the Apple logo area and on the actual camera bump. But I can't be sure without opening this up. So we're going to hit the iPhone 15. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll, I'll take the peel off first. There we go. We're going to hit this brand new iPhone 15 with an unscrew. Unscrew number two. And we're going to go ahead and cook the iPhone 15. <coughs> I am very sick right now, so drop a like on this video. And uh, the iPhone 15 is done cooking. Now we're going to pry into the back glass, remove it, and take a look at what Apple means by infused back glass. If you guys don't understand what infused back glass is, here's Cayenne to tell you a little bit more. For the first time ever in a smartphone, iPhone 15 has color embedded throughout a single piece of durable color infused glass. We use metallic ions to build color into the foundation of the material itself, precisely controlling the saturation to create five stunning colors. Thanks, Cayenne, for all that wonderful information. Now we have the phone ready to be opened up, so let's open it up. This looks very similar to the 14. The only real difference I can see here is uh, this metal plate. They made it into kind of a a steep hill or a steep slope instead of a, a stair shape. Aside from that, there's also some difference in writing on the battery. The iPhone 14 says uh, authorized service provider only, and the iPhone 15 says trained technician serviceable only. Good thing I am a tra trained technician though. Anyway, let's check out the back glass and see what the hell Cayenne was talking about, because I don't really understand. We'll hit this unactivated phone with an unscrew, remove the plate, and we can disconnect the back glass. Now that we have the glass removed, I basically want to scratch a little bit of the edges here and see what Apple means by infused. We'll grab our razor blade. This is a brand new phone. I don't know why I do this kind of stuff. Put on some gloves. Now is the moment of truth. Let's see what infused back glass really means. We'll take a razor blade and this kind of hurts because it's a brand new phone, but here we go. Um, okay. 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 So, still not entirely sure. There's definitely some sort of matte finish here as it's not completely transparent. But, I mean, you can still see through the back glass. I think I have to scrape off a little bit more to really get a better understanding. So far, this feels exactly the same as the iPhone 14 in terms of uh, how the paint is coming off. So, I have enough of the back glass paint scratched off. Let's see what Cayenne is talking about. And check that out. Definitely very different from the iPhone 14 so far. So there is a slight yellow tint and the glass is completely matte. It's not at all like with the iPhone 14. This might just be the coolest transparent back glass mod ever. I really thought Apple was trying to stop us from doing the transparent mod, but it looks like they actually might have made it a lot better. Anyway, now that we know that we can do this, I think there's nothing else to do but do it. So we're gonna have to first remove the wireless charging coil as well as the flash and the rear microphone. We can't damage these components because there are no replacements. We'll start off by heating and prying under the flex cable, being very careful not to tear it. Removing this flex cable, believe it or not, is the easy part. The rear microphone is held in by a metal plate, which we can just remove. And the flash is held in by the same along with one screw. Now we can simply lift up the rear microphone and just push out the flash module from the other side of the glass. 
Applying heat throughout this whole process is absolutely necessary. The wireless charger is extremely difficult to remove without breaking, but for this mod, simply not breaking it isn't good enough. We need it to look practically new and with all the MagSafe magnets intact and preserved. That means I have to get extremely creative. By applying a ton of heat, prying, and using the magnets to my advantage, I finally heard it begin to peel off. And then, it finally did. Guys, we just managed to pull off the wireless charging coil in one piece, unscathed, with the magnets still on there. That's insane. This is extremely hard to do. And uh, honestly, if you guys want to steal my method, I encourage it because this works really, really well. The paper is there to ensure that we can remove the wireless charging coil and its magnets without the wireless charging puck messing everything up. This is, I think, the second hardest part about this whole process, especially when there aren't parts available. So great success. We're going to have to remove this little piece of paint, I presume, and continue to scratch everything else off. Now that we have the wireless charger removed with the MagSafe, the microphone, and the flash, we have to uh, find a way to weaken the adhesive holding down this metal plate. I've tried prying it before with just isopropyl alcohol and it's so insanely strong. So uh, for that reason, we have some acetone. What we're gonna do is basically drop this back glass onto this little tray and then we're gonna open the acetone up and we're just gonna We'll move the back glass around in the acetone so that any adhesive left over comes off. Good soup. Now it's time to start prying on that metal backplate. The same metal backplate that the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max don't have. Which might have a lot to do with its durability issues. We'll keep dipping it in acetone throughout this process to make sure that any new adhesive gets worn down along the way. It's about to get even harder now that we're nearing the camera lenses. They're welded to the metal so we just kind of have to bend it back and forth and use a Dremel. To scratch the back glass off, we'll be using a bunch of razors. I had a few thumb cramps, so my cameraman took over for a little while. It's a huge relief that we don't have to worry about damaging the Apple logo this year because there's no vinyl on the inside of the glass like the iPhone 14. We're so close to being done with this entire process. Just a little bit of paint left on the camera bump area and... So, <laughs> this year's back glass is very different from last year's. I really don't think that this could have turned out any cooler. The paint is 100% infused and you can really tell when you tilt this phone on an angle or look around the camera bump. The color, believe it or not, under the actual back glass was just white. So all the color in the glass is reflected off that white layer under. The Apple logo is polished and on the outside instead of vinyl on the inside like it was last year. The glasses matte finish is icing on the cake. This thing is absolutely beautiful. I don't want to celebrate too soon though. Let's make sure everything works as it should before we get too happy. We'll go ahead and test the cameras. We'll also test the flash. And I'm a little bit scared to test this, but we just kind of have to do it. We'll grab our MagSafe charging puck. And it works. Let's go. This phone looks phenomenal like this, and honestly, I could not be happier. It did take hard work to get here, but I think it's more than worth it. What do you guys think, though? Let me know in the comments, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.